In this lesson, we will study about some miscellaneous statements which can be useful on certain cases. The first statement we will study is about clearing the output screen. It is used to clear the content of the output screen. Suppose that you are working on a board game. The board is displayed on the output screen. The state of the board is changing after a player's move. Now you have to display the updated state of the board. So it would be better if you clear the previous board and then display the new board. For example, in case of a tic-tac-toe game, after each player's move, it will be better to clear the previous table or the board and then display the new updated state of the board. Let's see how we can achieve this. I have two print statements. If after printing the mechatronic, I want to clear the screen first and then I want to print the UET Lahore. So I should have clear screen operation in between these two lines. There is a function available in the module known as OS where OS stands for the operating system. This module has many useful functions for different operating system operations. Let's import the module. Inside the module there is a function known as system and on this function we have to provide the string cls as the input argument and this will simply clear the output screen. Let's run the code and we see just the UET Lahore. Mechatronics is not displayed on the screen. Mechatronics was actually displayed on the screen but immediately after that the screen was cleared and we were unable to see that on the screen. You can run the code in step by step mode to see that actually happening. Now another function which can be very useful in these scenarios is a delay function. This function introduces some time delay and this function is available in the module known as time. So before clearing the screen, I can add a time delay over there. For that I can use the function sleep available in the time module and as the input argument, I have to specify the number of seconds. For example, 3 means it will stop for 3 seconds over here. Now let's run the code, you can see mechatronics is displayed, wait for 3 seconds and the screen is cleared and UT Lahore is displayed. Now let's write a program to display a stopwatch on the output screen and we will study about some more functions while creating this program. I am declaring 3 variables for hours, minutes and seconds and I will initialize all 3 of those to 0. This is the starting value of the timer or the stopwatch. Now what I need to do next? I want that time is played on the stopwatch which means that there should be increment on the seconds and of course after the 60 seconds there will be one increment in the minute and so on for the hours. And this will continue forever so I can have an infinite while loop over here. Let's print the timer value. First I will display the hours and I will use the format that hours are displayed in two digits with zero padding. So if it is one hour, it will be zero one. And if it is 11 hours for example, it will be one one. Then a colon sign and then the minutes value again with the same formatting. And then the seconds value. Now before incrementing the seconds value, I should wait for 1 second. So I can use the sleep function and specify 1 second. Then I will increment the value of the second variable. Before writing the logic for the minutes and the hours, let's first check the output of this code. You can see seconds are being incremented after 1 second. This might not be exactly 1 second because the statements other than the sleep function will also take some time. So you might observe some little inaccuracy in this timer. I have pressed Ctrl plus C to end the process because this is an infinite while loop and there is no break statement inside that which can terminate the loop. And now we can complete the logic for the minutes and hours. It is very simple when the seconds variable gets the value 60, we should reset the value of the second variable to 0 and there should be increment in the minute variable. Likewise when the minutes gets the value 60, we should reset the minute variable to 0 and there should be increment in the hours variable. Moreover, it will be better to clear the screen in each iteration of the while loop so that we don't see the previous value of the timer. Let's run the code and now you can see the updated value of the timer is being displayed. I will not wait for one minute to see if the minute is incremented or not but you can wait and see by yourself. I will press Ctrl plus C again 
This pressing Ctrl plus C to terminate the process is not a good thing. We must do it in a better way. Maybe we can ask the user if he wants to stop the stopwatch and based on that, we can use the break statement. So let's ask the user to press S to stop the stopwatch. So if the value entered by the user is lower or the upper S, we can use the break statement. Let's run the code. So it's working, but the timer is not moving ahead. What is wrong there? Let me press S to stop the process, but this is of no use for us. The reason why the timer was not running is this input statement. This is inside the while loop, but you know what happens when we use an input statement? The interpreter actually stops over there. It waits for the user to enter some value and it will not move to the next line. So what's happening over here is that on the first iteration of the while loop, the interpreter will stop over here and it will not move forward until user enters some value. So this is not going to work for us. This kind of scenarios can happen many times that we have to take a value from the user but at the same time we want some process to continue. Consider the example of the famous snake game where we control the direction of the scan using the arrow keys or any other keys from the keyboard. So if we will be taking that input using the input statement, the interpreter would stop over there and snake will not be moving on the screen. There can be many other such cases. So now let's see the solution of this scenario. There is one function known as keyboard hit and it is available in the module MSVCRT which stands for Microsoft Visual C++ Runtime. What this function keyboard hit does is that it will not make the interpreter stop over there but whenever some key is pressed from the keyboard, this function will return true and otherwise it will be returning false. So let's see that over here, I am importing the module. And here I will be using the keyboard hit function inside the if statement. The exact function name is kb hit. It is a function so I will place the parentheses after that. So what it does is that we will get a true over here whenever a key is pressed from the keyboard. And if the key is not pressed from the keyboard, this will be returning a false. And in any case, interpreter will not be waiting over here. So now we can say if any key is pressed, we will use the break statement. Let's run the code. You can see timer is working. You might observe some glitch on the output. That is because of the continuous use of the clear screen function. Remember you should first click inside the output window. And now I am going to press the enter key. And the program is ended properly. So that was a good use of the keyboard hit function. This function detects any key pressed on the keyboard but many times we need to know which of the key is pressed. For example in case of snake game or any car racing game, we need to know if the key is pressed to move right or to move left or something like that. And again for that we cannot use the input statement because interpreter will stop over there. Let's see the documentation of this MSVCRT module. If you go down, these are the console input output functions. The first is keyboard hit which we just saw and then is this function get character. This function reads the character pressed on the keyboard and this does not wait for the enter key to be pressed. When we use the input function, we know after entering the value we have to press the enter key. But with this function, we can input only one character and we do not need to press the enter key. This function returns the byte string corresponding to that particular character. Instead of going to the detail of that byte string, I prefer to use this getWCH function. It stands for get wide character and this function will return the unicode of that character. Now what is a unicode of a character? First let's talk about the ASCII code of any character. ASCII code is a digital code assigned to each character. So all characters you see on the keyboard and many other which are not on the keyboard have a digital code associated with them. That code is known as the ASCII code. Here is the list of all ASCII codes of the character. You can see the alphabets have codes, even the numbers itself have some digital codes. And on this side different control characters have the codes. For example this 127 is the ASCII code of the Dell key. So what is difference between the ASCII code and the Unicode? I found this question on the Stack Overflow 
and this answer is really useful to know about the ASCII codes and the Unicodes. You can read it from here that the ASCII codes are 7 bit codes which means there are 2 to raise per 7 which is 128 total number of possibilities. This also tells that 1 byte has 8 bits so why 7 bits are used for the ASCII codes? Actually 1 bit is used as the parity bit. I hope you remember the review question we did on the parity bit. Then there were extended ASCII codes and these codes use 8 bits. So by adding one more bit instead of 128, now we have 256 possibilities. Over here you can also see those extended ASCII characters. They are starting from the code 128 and going till 255. These are different special characters which are not even on the keyboard. So moving on there was the concept of unicodes. Unicodes have a very big list of characters, more than 100,000. There are different variants of the unicodes as well. The first 256 are same as of the ASCII codes and then are many other characters. You can see this list goes on and on. Let's see this Unicode 976. It is this symbol and the name is Greek beta symbol. We can use these symbols or characters in our program using these Unicode. For that we use this function CHR which stands for the character and as the input argument we can pass in the Unicode. I will specify 976. Let's print that. And you can see that Greek beta symbol on the output. Let's print the Unicode 48. And it is printed as 0. You can verify from the table that the ASCII code or the Unicode of the 0 is 48. Now let's see the get WCH function of MSVCRT module. Now when I will use this function, it will just take one single character from the user and there is no need to press enter key after that. That single character can be the enter key itself or can be any other key of course. Let's print the key entered by the user. Line number 2 is executing and basically the program is looking for some key press. I will press the alphabet K and you can see it is displayed correctly. I didn't press the enter key. If I try to enter more than one character, for example I will try to enter computer, so you can see it only considered the first character which was C. The remaining part is not read by the program. So now coming back to this stopwatch program, when a key press is detected by the keyboard hit function, over there I can apply the get w character function and actually I can identify which key was pressed. Suppose I want to stop the timer only when the escape key is pressed and not any other key. So I am inside this if statement block which means a key is pressed so I can take in that value into some variable, key is just the variable name. Now I can apply a condition if it is the escape key or not. The unicode of the escape key is 27. And if that is so, I will apply the break statement. Let's run the code. Timer is running. Trust me, I am pressing different keys, but the timer is still running. Now I will press the escape key. And you can see the program has stopped. Now we can further extend the working of this stopwatch. For example, if I want to reset the stopwatch when the key R is pressed from the keyboard. So again inside the keyboard hit if statement, meaning that when a key is pressed, I can check if that key is R. And then to reset the timer, I can simply assign the value 0 to all timing variables. Let's run the code. The timer is running. I will press the R key and you can see the timer was reset and again running after that. I will press escape to end the program. 
Now let's say I also want the functionality of pausing the stopwatch. So if user enters the alphabet P, the stopwatch should pause over there, meaning that it will not increment anymore. So how can I pause the stopwatch? Let me zoom out to see the complete code. This is the statement which is actually running the stopwatch. So somehow I have to skip this statement in the iterations of the while loop. So what I can do is I can set a variable for example start equal to false over here. And then I can apply a condition over here that if the variable start is true only then the second should get incremented. So when start will be false the seconds will not get incremented and the stopwatch would pause over there. But I should make the start equal to true before the start of the while loop otherwise timer will never start. So the start is true before the while loop. So these seconds will be incremented in each iteration of the while loop. But when a P is pressed by the user the start will get the value false and the seconds will not get incremented. Let's run the code. Timer is running. Now I will press P and you can see the timer has paused. I will press the escape key to end the program again. Now we should also have a method to start the stopwatch again. So let's associate that with the key S. And I can simply make the start variable equal to true and the stopwatch will start again. Let's see that over here. Timer is running. I will press P, the timer is paused. Now I will press S and the timer has started again. Now I will press the R key, the timer is reset and started. On resetting a timer, if you want to make it pause over there, you can simply do it here by setting the start variable value equal to false. Now when I press the R key, the timer is reset and it is also stopped over there. Now I will press S and then it will start. So that was all about different key hits and the character entry from the user. These are the unicodes of the arrow keys. This can be useful in different gaming like programs. Now I will discuss about two more things which are really very simple to understand. The first is known as the pass statement. The statement pass is associated with any block that can be a block of if statement or else statement or some loop that can be a block of some function or maybe a block of some class which we haven't studied yet. So over here I am writing a simple if statement. And in the else block I am writing the statement pass. The pass statement actually does nothing. Then why it is over there? Basically in python we cannot have an empty block. For example over here I have written the else block. I have something in my mind that I will be adding in the else block later on. But before that if I just want to check the output of the if statement and in future I will be adding something in the else block as well. So I cannot place an empty else block over there. And for such cases we can write a pass statement over there. It simply means that this block is empty at the moment but in future we will be adding something over there. The last thing for this lesson is about the keyword as. I am importing a square root function and I can use that in my program. But let's say I want to use the square root function but I don't like this name sqrt. So what I can do is I can write that from math import sqrt as sq or any other name. So what it means is now in my program I can use this name which is given by myself and it will be mapped to square root function. So over here instead of sqrt I can use sq. 
we can import the complete module using the as keyword maybe we can say import math as m and then in the program i can use m dot square root or m dot any function of the math module usually we do it when the name of the module or the name of the function inside the module is lengthy and we have to use it many times in our program so we can give it a short name and use that short name in our program so that's all from this lesson thanks for watching